Hi everyone. It's been a minute since I've put out any videos. The summer got away from me with some family obligations in New York, followed by back-to-back -back work trips. I'm back home now, and I'm hoping to make up for lost time with some new videos. A couple of months ago, I showed you this circuit board when I was talking about fuses. This is a crowbar circuit that I call the minibar. What is a crowbar circuit, and why would you want to use one? Well, to answer that, let's look at some of the equipment that we use in ham radio. Many of us have one of these radios, or maybe other similar models. Some of you probably have several of these radios. What is amazing to me is that we will spend thousands of dollars on a radio, and then some of us will go out and find the cheapest power supply we can possibly find to power it. Sometimes this works out okay, but I've read some horror stories online from people who got their radio fried by a cheap, failed power supply. When power supplies fail, they don't always fail by putting out no voltage. Sometimes they fail by putting out way too much voltage. Let's look at what typical radios list for their input power requirements. ICOM, Kenwood, Flex, and most Yezu radios state 13.8 volts plus or minus 15%. That works out to a minimum of 11.73 volts and a maximum of 15.87 volts. The Azu FTDX101 states 13.8 volts plus or minus 10%. That's an even smaller window of 12.42 volts to 15.18 volts. Elecraft's specification just states 11 to 15 volts without giving any nominal voltage or percentage. If you supply less than the minimum voltage, your radio will stop working or it may start acting flaky, but it's very unlikely that you will damage anything. If you supply more than the maximum, however, that's where things can go bad. Some circuits in the radio may draw too much power and overheat at higher voltages. There may also be components with a maximum voltage rating of 16 volts that can be damaged by higher voltages. This is where the crowbar circuit comes in. A crowbar circuit monitors the supply voltage. If the voltage exceeds a preset limit, the crowbar circuit creates a dead short across the power supply output, similar to putting a crowbar across the positive and negative terminals. That's where the circuit gets its name. The intent is to blow the fuse in the power supply. The most important thing this does is to prevent the radio and any other loads from seeing excessive voltage if the power supply regulator circuitry should fail. When I mentioned a crowbar circuit in one of the bad fuse videos a couple of months back, one of you commented that the crowbar circuit is kind of old-fashioned. That is absolutely true. Crowbar circuits have been around for a very long time, and there are some newer ways to protect against high voltage. I chose the crowbar circuit for several reasons. It is a very simple circuit. It draws absolutely no power until it trips, and it uses a device called an SCR or thyristor as the crowbar switch. SCRs are very robust devices and can take a lot of abuse without damage, so causing a short circuit isn't going to hurt it. I did some testing on the minibar. Let's take a look at how that went. In this test setup, I'm using my benchtop power supply. I've got the fluke meter connected at the load. The mini bar circuit has a 10 amp fuse because I'm still limited with my 20 amp supply. And we're using an incandescent trailer stop lamp as our simulated radio load. We'll power up the supply. There's a green LED on the mini bar to indicate that there's voltage at the output. And we can see that we've got about 13.64 volts at the load, and we're reading 13.8 volts at the supply. Now we'll start raising the voltage. The crowbar tripped and blew the fuse. 
The red fault LED on the minibar will light whenever there is a voltage at the input and the fuse is open. The voltage at the load was about 14.8 volts when the crowbar tripped. The power supply was showing 15 volts when it tripped. Since the minibar is in the middle of the two lengths of wire, it probably tripped at about 14.9 volts at the circuit board. Now we'll repeat the test with an MFJ4230 adjustable power supply. This is more typical of what might be in a ham shack. I've replaced the fuse in the minibar with a 20 amp fuse since the MFJ is a 30 amp peak supply. The voltage adjustment has a detent at what is supposed to be 13.8 volts. We're seeing just over 13 volts at the load with that setting. Now let's slowly raise the voltage. This is odd looking behavior. If we look at the front of the MFJ supply, we see the fault light flashing on and off. When the crowbar trips, it creates a short circuit. The power supply detects this as an overcurrent and immediately shuts off the output. Because it senses this electronically, it can shut the output off before the fuse will blow. Once the voltage is off, the crowbar circuit resets, the power supply no longer sees an overvoltage, so the output comes back on. Then the crowbar trips again. This process just keeps repeating in an oscillation. I re-ran this test with the oscilloscope connected. You can see how the voltage is shut off and then ramps back up. It would be better if the voltage shut off and stayed off, but we can see that the crowbar circuit still ensures that the load never sees a voltage greater than about 14.88 volts. Well, there you have it. A little bit about crowbar circuits, how they work, a little bit about how the minibar circuit works. So that's a little bit about how crowbar circuits work. The next question is, when would you need to use one? Well, first of all, if you picked up one of those 20, 30, or 40 amp power supplies for less than 50 or 60 bucks brand new, I'm going to say that you might want to strongly consider using a crowbar circuit. If you operate strictly on batteries and batteries alone, you don't need a crowbar circuit for batteries. There is no battery chemistry that I'm aware of, lead acid, lithium ion, or any of the other rechargeable or even non-rechargeable technologies that will suddenly increase voltage. The maximum voltage of a battery at its full state of charge is as high as it's going to get, as long as it's not connected to a charger. So if you're just running with a battery, no crowbar circuit needed because the battery voltage is never going to just mysteriously jump up. If you're using a battery with a charger, whether it's a solar charger, some kind of power supply, then you might want to consider a crowbar circuit because if the voltage regulator on that charger fails and it starts overcharging the battery, the voltage will slowly creep up and it might get to the point where it's above the maximum for your radio. So in that case, a crowbar circuit would, again, blow the fuse. And, and in that case, you definitely want to make sure you have a fuse between the crowbar circuit and the battery itself. Now with the mini bar, there's a fuse built into it, but if you make your own crowbar circuit, you want to make sure that you've got a fuse somewhere between the battery and the crowbar. Otherwise you might melt down one of those SCRs. If you're using a high quality power supply, something like an Astron and like the MFJ, I've not had any problems with those. Uh, and there's another, a number of other brands of high quality power supplies out there. With any of those, most of them are going to have built-in over-voltage protection. The Astron linear supplies actually have a crowbar circuit built into the power supply, and most of the modern switchers have some kind of over-voltage and over-current protection. Now, having said that, that MFJ that I used in the test, that's a variable power supply, and I can turn mine up to over 16.5 volts. 
So it has over voltage protection, but its over voltage protection is not going to trip until it's above whatever the maximum level is you can set it. So that's another thing to consider. And if you're interested specifically in the mini bar, I am planning on selling these. Unfortunately, with being gone all summer, getting these things ready has gotten away from me a little bit. Probably in about a month, maybe two at the outside, I should have these set up on the website and I'll have pricing figured out. I'll have them in stock and I'll be able to sell them. So if you're interested, um, these will be available. If you want to just make one of these yourself, I have put in the project page on the website the schematic. There's a technical description of how it operates that describes exactly how the voltage is set and so forth. And I have put up there all of the KiCad project files. KiCad is a circuit design and printed circuit board design software. And if you use that and you're familiar with it, the whole design file is up there. So if you want to go build your own, you know, be my guest. Uh, I'd love to see people building these. And actually, if you do build your own, please let me know about it and send me some pictures or send me some information on it. Uh, if you want to buy one, like I said, in about a month or so, I'll have these up there. And uh, that's all I've got for this time. So thanks for watching, as always. If you found the video helpful, please click on that like button. If you like the channel, I'd appreciate a click on the subscribe button. And I already thanked you for watching. So I'm Tom, WA2IVD, and this is Ham Radio A to Z.